Hello everyone, welcome back to 51 GT3 Racing Academy. In the previous episode, we talked about corners that lead onto a long straightaway. In the next several episodes, we will integrate all the techniques we learned previously and use them to tackle different types of corners. Today, let's talk about low speed corners. A low speed corner usually has a larger turning angle and lower average speed, making it difficult for drivers to take advantage of its cornering speed. However, we can still improve our lap time by using the low speed corner to minimize the time used upon entering and exiting the corner. Let's talk about two of the most common low speed corner types today. The first one is a low speed corner that comes after a long straightaway. Take turn 14 at Shanghai International Circuit as an example. After applying full throttle on the long straightaway, the car is ready to break into the corner at a very high speed. At this point, the key to improving lap time is to maintain a high speed through the end of the straightaway and start braking as late as possible. In other words, the braking and the entry point should come in late in this low speed corner. The cornering line should look like a late apex line instead of a geometric line. Although having a late braking point can cause a certain amount of time loss, there's no need to be worried because more time was earned in the braking zone even before we entered the corner. Another type of low speed corner is one that leads onto a long straightaway. Turn 6 at Shanghai International Circuit will be an example of that. The most important thing to achieve here is maximizing our speed as soon as we get to the corner exit point and through the straightaway that follows. A late apex line works better than a geometric line for a high horsepower rear wheel drive car because it gives us an extended corner exit phase and allows the driver to accelerate earlier, eventually exiting at a higher speed. Check out the left part of this brake versus accelerator curve, which represents the corner entry phase. Notice how we should change our braking input during this phase. What we want to do here is to locate the latest possible braking point to brake fully, then start to trail brake after entering the corner. So the car can enter the corner at the highest possible speed. The middle part of this brake versus accelerator curve represents the mid corner phase. Notice how we should switch from the brake to the accelerator during this phase. What we want to do here is to switch smoothly between the brake and throttle to balance the front and rear weight of the car, releasing the overall grip. The right part of this brake versus accelerator curve represents the corner exit phase. Notice how we should change our throttle input during this phase. What we want to do during this phase is to increase our throttle input gradually and keep the tire slippage under control. Meanwhile, we want to control the steering wheel and create the best slip angle to get good traction and maximum tire grip. Let's say we are 0.23 seconds behind if we choose the late apex line other than the geometric line here, but it can give us a higher corner exit speed which decreases the lap time by almost one second when the car gets to the long straightaway that follows. Then again, if you are to drive a front-wheel drive vehicle with low horsepower, choose the geometric line instead, because it helps you avoid speed loss when cornering and reach a preferable speed upon the corner exit. That's all for today's episode. If you want to learn more racing techniques, let us know in the comments section. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.